Good morning and just up there is Victoria train station and we are on Warwick Square for a walk around Pimlico this morning just it's south I think of Victoria station it's going to be a circular walk so let's see if we can end up back at Victoria station I'm Angela welcome to chatty walks with Angela as you know if you're on the channel regularly we are here to give you a lovely walk around parts of London a little bit of chat a little bit of history definitely some food checks to see what price you might be paying for food while you're here so let's go head around Pimlico I've wanted to come to Pimlico to do a walk for quite a long time do you know why because there's a bus at Charing Cross Road just before Trafalgar Square next to Leicester Square and it has Pimlico written on it and I just thought I'd quite like to take a bus to Pimlico I never did so I'm walking here today just came from Victoria train station and Pimlico is a story of mixed mixed fates mixed things happening now we're not allowed in there this is a private garden for people who live in Warwick Square just show you I think uh, if you watch my videos carefully attentively you may remember that there was a big trend around the 19th century who built houses to put big green squares in the middle of them this is an example what I was going to see if I could find I can see one over there I'll try not to get run over so I'm actually walking down the middle of Warwick Square at the moment so something I, I find interesting in the old squares 19th century houses I love the fact that they have these old you see on the doorstep boot scrapers so something you can scrape your boot on from the muddy maybe even slushy streets there's another one and another one boot scrapers on Warwick Square now these places may look quite grand and well to do these days this was not always the case started off very well to do and as is so often the case ended up rather differently and then went back up again going to cross back over I think you can now see through the gardens that we're in a typical London square all the way around now you may be used to hearing various names from me who sort of built a lot of London this part of London it was a chap called Thomas Cubitt Thomas Cubitt was asked by the Grosvenor family let me just poke this through here can you see there's the gardens So the Grosvenor family were actually what was once described uh, as an obscure Cheshire family in the 17th century married into money they married into the inheritance of Mary Davis who at the age of 12 joined their family having inherited all of this land that was given over by James the first about 1600 pounds and there was a 15 shillings on the end so the Grosvenor family marriage in, married into wealth and they've held on to that wealth ever since although they've actually sold off Pimlico interestingly enough so here we are on St George's Drive and this was one of the nicest roads you could live on 
the biggest houses were built here along with uh, Warwick Square, Eccleston Square or was it Eccleston Place? I forget St Gabriel's Church and as I said sort of from here all roads in that direction will take you to Victoria train station and Victoria coach station you're literally 10 minutes I think at the most if you're speeding it because you're trying to catch a train or a, a coach you might be a lot faster and actually one of the reasons why this area changed from very up market to very very down market was when Victoria station was built And this part of London became less desirable as people could move to the suburbs of places like Brixton and Streatham. I'm going to see if I can cross without taking my knife into my hands. Let's see what I can do. I can see a white DP Diva, but it's stopping. Woohoo. We are in February. As usual, I try to plan my walks on a clear blue sky day, mostly because I'm terrible at editing if the lighting's bad. So just about got some blue sky at the moment, frost this morning, minus one. See we've got some cloud over there. So if it gets all dark, sorry and all. So we are on St George's Drive. As I said, one of the grandest roads in the area. And here we have a blue plaque. I'm going to see a few blue plaques for Swami Vivekananda, who was Hindu philosopher who lived here in 1896. Quite a few blue plaques on this walk. Now, on this walk, you are going to learn the history of the expression screws. And that's screws as they refer to prison wardens. So prison wardens got the name screws in this very area. Also in this very area the name POM started. You know POM as in English people in Australia called POMs. You're going to learn the origin of that but you're going to have to stick around. I'm not giving it all up right now for you to know everything. So here we are along St George's Drive. As I said, the Grosvenor family became the richest family in Britain when they married into the young Mary Davis's family. This whole area, surprise, surprise, you may not be surprised to hear, used to be swampland, marshland, and it was actually known as the Neat House Gardens, famous for its wholesome produce of herbs and vegetables. But it did fringe the West End and with population and desirability, people started moving out, finding new places to live. And so the Grosvenor family asked Thomas Covet to develop this whole area. He actually, Thomas Covet didn't see the end of all his labors, literal labors and work here. He was actually a one-time ship's carpenter described as perhaps the most prolific builder Britain has ever seen, yet you probably never heard of him. You just thought it was about Christopher Wren and people like that, didn't you? The interesting thing, if you find these things interesting, is that when St Catherine docks were excavated, remember the St Catherine docks walk? walk check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, all the um, stuff that they dug up, they reclaimed the soil on the hard core from the dug up St Catherine docks and put it down here to fill up the marshland. I'm going to cross back over now, trying to actually get you as much sunshine as I can. So 
Cubitt wanted Pimlico to be a grid of handsome white stucco terraces. And I think you can see that it's definitely been achieved here. Eccleston, Warwick and St George's squares, the biggies, as I said, this one that we're on, St George's Drive and Belgrave Road, where we started the walk. They were sort of the two principal streets. And we're just about to get to Lupus Street, which similarly had grand houses and shops. Built for the middle and upper classes but didn't last that long. Even Thomas Cubitt was depressed and disappointed how this area in the end didn't get the market he thought it would. There was a major problem with drinking water from the Thames, getting polluted. 1854, massive cholera outbreak resulted in deaths in every street in Pimlico. And by 1858, the stink from the Thames was so bad, it was affecting the House of Commons, how dare it? So they quickly passed a bill and set up new sewers and the Western pumping station. But once uh, also Victoria Station was built, people started moving out of the area and a lot of the houses filled up with loads of families, became derelict dilapidated and eventually this whole area needed regeneration. So there, see, not making it up, there's a plaque for Thomas Cubitt, 1788 to 1855, master builder, developer of Belgravio and Pimlico. And here he is. And there's the man who developed all of this. The original gardeners here, uh, I think he paid them all off quite handsomely because there was a lot of opposition to taking all this ground and building on it. How little things have changed. So he paid them handsomely for giving it all up basically. And across here. Just turn you to see. So just everywhere you turn in this area, you get these streets with the pillars. Can't remember, I'm looking at the pillars. Going, excuse me, going Doric with those. Could be wrong. And we're gonna double back here, camera battery allowing to make this a circular walk if I can. Here we are at Looper Street. Lovely sunshine, nice to enjoy. I'm actually in this area because I'm going out with my little niece this afternoon. I call her my little niece because she's 16. She's at college in this area. And I think she wants to take her aunt clothes shopping. <laughs> uh, this old art isn't very good at clothes shopping. It's just going to give me some help choosing my clothes. So you can see um, <laughs> usual stuff, uh, Second World War, things like that. Uh, area got bombed, one of the reasons there had to be a big regeneration programme. So you've got a mix of the old houses and newer buildings. I've forgotten, I think this is one of the colleges or universities here. I think it's Pimlico College or something. So, Yep, there you go. Another look up the street there. Looking lovely in the sunlight. Moreton Terrace, that is.
Oh, it's primary school, not a college. We're in Westminster here. We're actually really close, really close. So the House of Parliament, House of Commons, all that type of thing. Tells me it's 11 a.m. We are on the corner of St. George's Square and we will pick up St. George's Square again later. Over there. And there is something interesting in this little triangular part of the square here. I haven't been here before, so I'm not sure how to get in see if I can find a way in. So this is the far end of St George's Square and I think this is what I want to show you right here. This is the old cabmen shelter, St George's Square cabmen shelter. And this was a fund established in 1875 to run shelters for the drivers of hansom cabs and later hackney carriages or taxi cabs. And it's designed as a shelter from bad weather where a cabman could get a decent meal away from pubs and bars. And there we go, the old cabman shelter, the corner of St George's Square. On the corner here, number 33, St George's Square, blue plaque for Major Walter Wingfield. Here we go. Now, it's an interesting thing with here. He was a bit late getting inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. He was a Victorian Army officer. It says here, inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame in 1997 as the founder of modern lawn tennis. He lived there, obviously. And I think you can see sort of a bust of him and um, sort of tennis rackets and things like that in the, um, actually at Wimbledon. Somebody taking a picture of vegetables here. Now we are coming up to Pimlico station, which is the underground station. They didn't get an underground here until 1972 via the Victoria line. And as I've said, this area has just had such a mix of fortunes that it sort of fed into the regeneration of the area. It's quite a lot of Peabody, Peabody, Peabody Trust housing developments here. Uh, it's a charitable trust for housing. And we're going to see something a bit later on in the walk of that ilk. Look at that. Maternity Welfare Centre, City of Westminster, 1937. Maternity and Child Welfare Centre. The Bessborough Centre, there's a day nursery as well. There you go. And we're going to go along Bessborough Street. Yeah. And onto Bessborough Gardens.
Trust me, I don't entirely know where I'm going right now. <laughs> no, approximately where I'm going. You know how it goes. It's a chassis walk with Angela. Might find my way, might not find my way. <laughs> uh, let's see. Get lost occasionally. If you're new to the channel, I do get lost. Right, here's a map. I am here. So there's Bessborough Place over there. But that looks like a dead end. So let's go this way. See if I can cross. I can. See the lights have changed, run for it. I think we are joining Vauxhall Bridge Road, if I've got that correctly. Or I'll edit this bit out. <laughs> Sound like I do know what I'm talking about. Over there is the Swan, the White Swan pub. I know that's been around since at least the 18th century. Historic. Yep, Vauxhall Bridge Road is where we are. So I think I've probably missed best for a card. Let's have a look, see if we find them. Here we go. There's other gardens. We don't need to do best for a... There you go. There's best for a gardens. I'll show you just so you can see. It's funny, Google will give you little reviews of places now. So the teeniest, tiniest gardens have little reviews. There you go. There's a fountain. I know somebody mentioned the fountain in their review. Lovely. Of course, there's a helicopter overhead. Always a helicopter. Can't film with that one. There it goes. So we're going to turn and cross. And we are starting to head towards one of the Tate places. We know Tate Modern, Tate Britain, all of that. We're heading off to Tate Britain. Aha! Apparently I can cross the road here. That's Victoria, oh, sorry, I'm not saying Victoria. That's the bridge over there, over the Thames. Victoria on the mind. Could be a while crossing this road, looking at all this traffic. Press the button. Button pressed. Vauxhall Bridge Road. We're still waiting. And I'm going to cross. We are entering John Islip Street now. I can see there's lots of little maps all over the place here. Some people think this is sort of a hidden gem around this area. Um, simply because it's got such a sort of, I suppose maybe 19th century feel. It's literally no distance from Victoria Station. If you like a bit of a walk and a stroll. Look at these trees. Jewellery shop here. At work jewellery. Flower shop. Coffee is always a good idea. Yep, as is tea. 
Right, first price check of the day. Spicy chorizo sausage with cheese, toasted, five pounds, okay? So spicy chorizo sausage with cheese, toasted, five pounds. In a coffee shop here. John Islip, whose street this is, was the abbot of Westminster from 1500 to his death in 1532. We're getting into the area now of Tate Britain and the Chelsea College of Arts and Design. This is Ponsonby Place. I'm going to tell you about Ponsonby Place, but not right now. I'm going to come back to Ponsonby Place. And we've got continuation there. I'm not going to give you that one right now. I'm going to come back to it. Mystery, huh? Mystery. Now this may be an old Peabody estate set of buildings. I'm not 100% sure. Got the look though. Looks lovely. And here we are. University of the Arts, London, Chelsea. Landseer House, Lawrence House. Beautiful buildings. Lovely little square there as well. I love all the squares. There you are, that's Leighton House, isn't it gorgeous? I'm sort of looking towards Westminster, if we continue in that direction. Here comes the bus. I've taken a bus around here once actually. It's really good. That is a statue of John Everett Millais. And I hate to say it, but I don't know who that is. Knowledgeable people, as you know, I'm no expert, put it in comments. We are going to go down here because we are at the Tate Britain. Life between islands, Caribbean British arch, art 1950s till now. From December 21 to April 22. See great art for free, it's true. The Tate Britain is free. Though for obvious reasons they'd like you to make a contribution when you're there. Or at the very minimum support the um, eateries and things like that. We're at the Manton ent entrance here. Just going to point you to Chelsea College of Arts. Um, originally an armed forces place I think. So there you are, anybody's at the, or thinking about going to the Chelsea College of Arts or there's somebody there. That's where they are. And here we are at the Tate Britain. Looking good. In a sort of popped, stony sort of a way. I don't know if that's from bombing actually. I think that might have been maintained because they moved all the artwork out of here. Um, during the war, there was a fair bit of damage to the place. So I'm pretty sure you're already aware that uh, Sir Henry Tate caused all of the Tate places. We've got a fair few different Tate places throughout the UK and around London. Obviously, we've got the Tate Modern further down the river. So, sugar magnets, yep, from Tate and Lyle. J 
just in case you didn't know, was the founder. So Henry Tate was the founder of the various Tates. This one in particular has low, large holdings of the works of J.M.W. Turner, who bequeathed all his own collection to the nation. It's going to walk through here. We're going to dally here for a while. Because when I was researching this walk, I find, found out stuff I didn't know. I get very interested when I find stuff out I don't know. So here we are heading towards Millbank. So named because there were water mills further on along. Um, I think probably when the monks at Westminster or something had things going on. So here we are at Tate Britain. Now why am I dallying here? Did you know it used to be a prison? A bad prison. A terrible prison. So before it was a home of the arts, it was a home of imprisonment and not good imprisonment if there's ever such a good thing. Tate Britain, free for all. So, the prison. Let's talk about that. As I pull my hat on, my hat, my hat keeps falling off. So, why does the Tate Britain have something to do with the word screw as an expression of a prison warden? Well, the prisoners were kept here in incredibly harsh conditions. And one of the punishments they were given was they would be kept in their cells for weeks on end and made to work on machines such as the crank. The warders would set the crank to be turned by as much as 15,000 times a day, making the work easier or harder through screws on the crank itself giving rise to the expression screws. So they were tightening or loosening the screws to make the cranking easier or harder. They also forced prisoners to do boring, repetitive tasks, such as passing a heavy cannonball in complete silence. So this was called separation or silence as forms of punishment at the prison. It's an incredibly badly designed prison, so labyrinthine that the warders actually got lost regularly themselves. And actually sound travelled. So the prisoners, even though they were supposed to be in silence, the prisoners could actually communicate with each other. So it wasn't ideal. over. As you can see there's a fair amount of traffic going on at the moment. Still a fair amount of traffic. Well I might as well turn you back towards the Tate because there's something else I want to tell you. So the, the um, prison here, the Millbank prison, got, ooh, I can cross, uh, was taken out of action in the mid-19th century, I think, and transferred to Pentonville. So Pentonville was supposed to then be a model prison compared to the horrors of this one. There we are, here we are at the Thames. Lots of development along here. If you come into Waterloo Station, you can actually see it really well from the train around Vauxhall onwards. That's Lambeth Bridge. Don't know if you can see it in the distance. So once this is called Millbank Prison, we're on Millbank, as I said, takes you straight along to the sort of Westminster area. 
So once this was decommissioned as a prison, guess what it became? It became a holding depot for convicts prior to transportation on boats. And they were held there for three months before their final destination was decided. And by 1850, around 4,000 people were condemned annually to transportation from the UK from this very point. And that is actually where the expression POM came from. A rather derogatory word from Australians towards English people is POM. And do you know where it came from? Right here, prisoner of Millbank, POM. There you go. So, exactly where we are is where the word screws came from and where the word ponds came from. Let's all go around here. We're coming up to Vauxhall Bridge now. Opened in 1816. And glittering through the trees and the branch is, you can see our head of international security, MI6. So it's known as the SIS building or the MI6 building at Vauxhall Cross. I don't know if you can pick it up, the sun's quite strong here to see the building of our secret intelligence service been there since 1994, was previously the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. And as I said, this area is known as Vauxhall Cross, had a lot of development. Now, I think, you know, it's probably, uh, you probably know it from a few James Bond films and things like that. Might have seen it there. I think Duck Tours they began around here as well. I don't know if they're running at the moment. Now, why was I saying to you, I'm not going to tell you about Ponsonby? Was it Ponsonby Terrace? Ponsonby Square, something like that. Just over there. That's because I didn't want to give away the game about the prison. So just over there, but where the prison warders actually lived for Millbank Prison. They're a very nice very nice living accommodation. These sorts of houses, lovely for them. All well, the prisoners were in silence or separation. And I understand there's a pub called the Morpeth Arms that was there then and is still there now and still a local for the people that work in that same building. So, lots of sunshine now. Hope you can see okay. We're going to head along the Thames a bit now before turning back up towards Victoria. As I said, circular walk. Here's an Uber boat, as I said, might give one of those a go. Thank you, Ibrahim, for your uh, detailed description of boat services. I really would like to contact, well, see who's the nicest. I get in touch with them and say, can I film on your boat, please? I was filming in Kingston in the Ventil Centre a couple of weeks ago, but they told me to stop filming. Boo. The best time to drink coffee is now. Have we got a price? Ooh, mulled wine, £5.90. There you go. £5.90 if you want a mulled wine. It's February. We can still drink mulled wine in February for sure. Right, clambering up here. Okay. 
Then I'm going to work out how to get down the other side. <laughs> Let's see how I get on, shall I? I haven't got a clue. I know I'm staying this side of the river. So we return to Vauxhall Bridge Road. Busy, busy, busy central London next to the Thames. I can cross it. Oh, it's got a green man. Get me, cyclists. Thank you. Never quite sure if they got the same ones as we have or not. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Right, here we are again. Looking at the MI6. And we are going over here. And then I'm going to head down to the river, I think. If I can find the way. I sound confused. <laughs> yeah, I'm confused. I'm going to go over here and see if I can get down to the river. If you see a bizarre cut in the videos, because I could not. <laughs> I'll see you see the other side then. Ooh, I think I can see a staircase down. Woohoo! Here we go, heading to the Thames. Ah, some nice uh, statues on the bridge there. Down we go. As I said, Vauxhall Cross, massive redevelopment. You can't miss it if you go through on the train regularly. We're looking east now along the Thames. Uh, the Waterloo train line just behind those buildings. I know them well from the other side. Let's, uh, which way are we going? Are we allowed through there? Let's have a look. I can see a gate open. Hopefully, yes, then. As I said, <laughs> qualified tour guides are available. Right, let's have a look. CCTV in operation. Okay. Any illegal activity will be reported to the police. I will do my best not to partake of illegal activity. Fascinating. Some of our classic kind of I don't know what those are, fish, fishy type creatures, I don't know. <laughs> there they are. All's got loads around here. So, housing development here. All new to me along here. We're on the Thames path along this section. We're actually heading to Pimlico Gardens right now. I haven't got a clue what the time is. I'm actually meeting someone for lunch before I meet my little niece to take me shopping. I wonder if I'm late. Might be. Here we are. Somewhere along here, and I don't know where, is the outlet for the Tyburn. Tyburn River, which is, um, well, the Tyburn Gallows. So the Tyburn Gallows were at the corner of Oxford Street with Marble Arch. And it was named after the Tyburn River. And the outlet is along here somewhere. Honestly, don't know where. Along here somewhere is, I think it's now the Tyburn Stream, but the outlet for it is along here somewhere. I think it rises in Hampstead or something, Tyburn. 
but yes, historic reverse stroke stream because of its association with Marble Arch and the Tyburn Gallows, where people came for a days out and entertainment to see people being hanged. Ah, here we are, back at the road. And I'll just point you in that direction. So we've just walked along there. And that's along the river to the east. So Vauxhall Bridge avoiding steps, Thames Path, Thames Path. Let's head this way. There's the Grosvenor. Oops, sorry, pointing the camera up a bit too high. There we go. We are on Grosvenor Road. Named after, if you were paying attention, the Grosvenor family. We're going to head to Pimlico Gardens now, just through here. Again, as you can see, mixed housing for the various sort of ebbs and flows of the fortunes of this area. Some work being done here. Still a lot of renovation work going on in this area. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to stop to take my hat off. So my hat is falling off constantly. Bear with me a sec. Okay, back without a hat falling off my head now. And I've just realised I'm very late for my lunch date. Sorry, lunch date. I might need to speed up a bit. <laughs> Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> sorry, lunch day. Really sorry. I have to message them. So if I disappear, because I've had to apologise to somebody. <laughs> oh dear. Funnily enough, I'm probably 12 minutes from Victoria, something like that. So we are coming up to St George's Square. We, we walked along the top end of that earlier when we saw the cabbie shelter. And this is Pimlico Gardens here. There you go, and there's some gardening work going on there at the moment. A couple of sculptures here. We are going to head along the other side of the road now because I am going to show you Dolphin Square which is a really exciting building. I find it fascinating this place. You can just see it coming up now. Right, let's cross to the middle. St George's Square other end. There we are, St George's Square. It's a long rectangular square, St George's Square. But again, one of the top squares, lovely buildings. So typical of this whole area. And as I said, varied fortunes for sure, Pimlico. And Dolphin Square is a very interesting example of what do we do? So what do we do when we want to house people? Is the question that Dolphin Square partly was here to answer. Now, this was designed as a self-contained city of 
1250, 1250 upmarket flats. Yep, upmarket flats, but with a twist. Now, they became very popular with MPs and public servants, because they're very close to Parliament. A home to MPs, to spies, and to other notable people. Not only that, there you are, I'm just going to point you in. There we go. It has been at the epicentre of scandals. Now, you can look it up yourself, you may have your own ideas. Some of the scandals that have happened around Dolphin Square. It was actually meant for mixed usage in terms of who could rent here. So even though it's sort of got a bit of a reputation for MPs and the like, and that's, that's not wrong actually, at one point there were more than 100 MPs and Lords renting flats in here, including William Hague, Sir Menzies Campbell, David Steele, Prime Minister Harold Wilson, just some of the politicians who've lived here. Yep. And it was supposed to be, as so much of this area became, for socially inclusive living. Waterside residents at Westminster for persons of every income group. And they did indeed have taxi drivers, actors, MPs, the lot. I'm going to say that's the old Battersea Power Station over there. And we are going to walk up here now. By the way, when Dolphin Court was built, it was the largest block of flats in Europe. And here we are now, back at a classic mix. We've got the classic Pimlico homes. And then over here, we're going to be looking at Churchill Gardens Road. And this was a serious effort at urban regeneration around here. So the City Council produced a plan for Pimlico, trying to sort of regenerate it, get rid of the dereliction. They were going to build sort of 10 storey apartment blocks with shopping zones and big roads. But in the end, they came up with this as their regeneration plan. And it's considered to have been a success of urban regeneration right in the centre of London. As I said, the two sides of the road, very much capturing the two changes of fortune up and down over the years of this particular area. I'm going to try and cross. We're heading up towards Lupus Street again before we head back towards Victoria, where my lunch date is. <clears throat> probably waiting by now. Oops. I always forget I walk quite slowly when I'm filming. Whereas when I'm normally walking, I walk really fast. Yeah. The trials, the trials, I tell you. I think this is Johnson Place. Um, Johnson, John Johnson, was actually the first person to try and develop this area from a marshy swamp. So he bought a lease from the Groveners, I think, um, to develop the land. They were not happy, understandably. And it actually then got passed on to Thomas Cubitt, who took it on, paid the, all the gardeners off, 
and ta-da, we have what we have today. I believe this is Rainley Road. Yes, it is, because I can see the blue plaque. So, at number 15, Rainley Road. This is the home, former home of Doug Douglas Macmillan, founder of Macmillan Cancer Relief, who lived here. He saw his father die in 1912 and wanted to improve the experience of cancer. And also a strong supporter of vegetarianism. So this is where he lived. Now we're heading up to Lupus Street and we're going to cross into Cambridge Street to take us on the final part of this circular walk. Hope you're enjoying it. I'm finding it really interesting. Didn't do a practice run or anything, so you know, some of it's new to me as well. Let's see if we can get across here. Run for it. They're crossing socialise. So this is Cambridge Street, another of the classics, as you can see. I've seen that many places to show you for food checks, actually. Sorry about that. It's very quiet on this road. I think they've closed off. Okay, all right, so it's one way. Resident permit holders only. Feels very hushed all of a sudden. Right, bear with me a sec. I'm going to message my lunch date and just say sorry I'm running a bit late. Hold on a sec. Oh dear, my lunch date was there early. Mm, well, they've wandered off by now. Oh, we shall see. The trials, as I said, the trials. Right, I will speedily walk up Cambridge Street. Moped coming. Quite a long street as well. <laughs> But as I said, all roads do end at Victoria if I keep heading in this direction. So I think we're looking, is that the back end of the church that we were looking at when we were at Warwick Square? Just as we were starting this walk. Magic. And the clouds have stayed away as well. Thank you, clouds. Appreciate it. Yep, and again, more examples. As I said, Thomas Cubitt wanted a grid layout. Of these stuccoed houses. Does that sound right? Stuccoed? I don't know. It's in that direction as well. You can hear my boots. So these are, um, today I'm actually wearing winter boots. Let me show you. you see? They got fur on the inside and everything. Bought them when there wasn't one single pair of shoes that I could wear. And these were comfortable. Now I can wear them about 16 hours a day and I'll be fine. And when you're in this business, you do appreciate shoes that you can wear in comfort for a long distance. I was just in Cyprus, walked 15 miles one day, in the same pair of trainers. Yep, that was St Gabriel's Church, so 
We're actually coming towards the end of the walk now. That's Warwick Square over there, where we started. Some clouds over the top. I see a blue plaque. So, who's this blue plaque for? Ah, yes, I remember. This is for Jomo Kenyatta, first president of the Republic of Kenya, who lived there. Uh, he was the leader of their independence movement, I remember. Blue plaques galore in these areas. Tons of them. I think I'm going to cross. As you can see, once we head up there, you can see the modern buildings. And then you're hitting around probably that part more your Victoria coach station than Victoria train station that you'll be seeing ahead. It's going to cross here. This is Clarendon Street. Ah, yes, here. Laura Ashley has got a green plaque. So this is a Westminster City Council. So says designer, began printing fabrics here with her husband, Bernard. So Laura Ashley, as you, some of you may remember fashion, um, chairs and sofas and wallpapers, quite sort of floral designs, almost sort of 19th century style. So it was all happening around here. Right, we're back on St. George's Drive. Gonna head along here. And there you go, you can see kind of, that's the back end of Victoria Station now, ahead of us, where it all gets modern all of a sudden. Lots of modern stuff going on. Here is an embassy, Albanian embassy here. I think we'll cross over into Eccleston Square. How does that sound? Sound like a plan? I reckon. Here we go. Here we are, Eccleston Square. A bit of traffic here now. I'm wondering which you'd rather do rather see actually Victoria Station or Eccleston Square. <laughs> tell you what, go round this side of Eccleston Square and take you up to Victoria. There you go, why don't we do it that way? Eccleston Square by the way, uh, this was a hotbed, a hotbed of political activity because it was so close to the Houses of Parliament, Pimlico was, you know, raging politically. Prior to 1928, both the Labour Party and the Trades Union Congress shared offices in Eccleston Square, right here, right here. Trades Union Congress and the Labour Party shared their offices here. And in 1926, the general strike was organised here as well. Not in that garden necessarily, although maybe. But in one of these buildings. There you go. General strike. Organised around here. There you go. Thank you, Carl, for letting me cross. Why don't I, because I've got a little battery left, why don't I head you up towards Victoria now? So in the distance, I'm not sure if you can see, you have Victoria Coach Station. Anyone who's travelled in and out on coach in London, I think you've probably been through there. The Best Western here. So what happened was when the um, area came into lesser fortunes around here, Lots of places become sort of low rent lodgings, cheaper hotels, those sorts of things. This is a Best Western. 
Buckingham Palace Road. Ooh, this is telling us we are now at Buckingham Palace Road. Once you're there, you're not far from Buckingham Palace. Now, do check out my walk. I have done a walk from Victoria train station to Buckingham Palace. Now, I didn't take the shortest route, I took a slightly more scenic route. But you can actually walk about 10 minutes. from here to Buckingham Palace. Though so we're at the sort of back end at the moment, so add on five minutes. I see a megabus. And there you are. The main entrance to Victoria Coach Station. And this is a, there is a Google building. I can see they're just doing it up at the moment. Been in there, they call it a hub. Been in there for training and what have you. And this is Buckingham Palace Road now. Very, very close to oh, there's public. I also love the fact there's a public library there. It's very sweet and sweet. Lovely looking houses. I always wonder do people live there? Are they offices? And we are now coming along the side of Victoria train station. As you can see, lots of renovation going on. Pub Victoria. Hmm. I've done a video for you inside a Victoria train station and I've also done the um, bus from Victoria all the way through to Liverpool Street. She I might do that with my niece meeting her here. I bet she hasn't thought of taking the bus. I'll do that. I'll be all-knowing Auntie Angela. I know about things, you know. Okay, so Hub Victoria, it says it's going to be an outstanding landscaped public realm I wonder what that means. <laughs> I wonder. Also, if you've seen my video where I take the bus from the Chelsea Flower Show to Victoria, it was along here as well. And I was behind a rubbish truck most of the time. <laughs> you can never choose these things. And here we are at Victoria train station. So this is the back entrance. It actually takes you into Victoria Place, and we're going to go this way. You can see my video at the front. I'm going to take you in here and prioritise my lunch date. Who is no, no doubt waiting now, thinking, get on with that, Angela. I have said I'm filming. They know. This is Victoria Place. They've got eateries, shops. All those sorts of things in here and I am going to head upstairs and find some nosh. So I am off to meet my lunch date. I really hope you enjoyed this video around Pimlico and I will see you next time. Bye bye.